Welcome to the award-winning What's Cooking show. Welcome to What's Cooking. There's one seat left just for you. Today, chili. We've had one of our Ohio winters, and uh, it looks like it may continue for a little longer. And according to Punk Satoni Phil, you think he eats chili? Probably. Phew. I wouldn't want to be That's down in that no, brown hole. <laughs> brown hog hole. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Um, we're gonna make. Let's get down to business. Yes, here, okay? <laughs> we're gonna make a black and white bean chili that has chicken in it and a chili cornbread. So we're gonna start out. We have some oil over here that's heating up, and we're gonna add some onions. And how about a clove of garlic? Alrighty. I'm gonna use my uh, my new crack and peel here. And this is a clove of garlic. Uh, let me show you quickly. Uh, the best way to store garlic. Here's a bulb of garlic is in a dark place that has some uh, cir air circulation and this has holes in it. This is kind of a decorative garlic keeper. This cracks the garlic so that you can easily peel the skin off. How's that? And once you have the skin off, then you merely take your chef's knife and go across it a few times. So you get nice small pieces. How's that, good enough? Mm-hmm. One more time. And this will go right in there with the onion. Please. Okay. Thank you. You need another one later, huh? In a minute. Okay. Because I want to try my new toy again. All right. Well, we're going to have two things going on at once here. The second um, one that we're making is a chili cornbread, which is kind of a unique chili, and it's great to uh, serve for dinner, take a potluck. We have a pound of ground beef that we're going to cook with some chopped onion and some green pepper and some more garlic. Okay. Crack and peel. You're having fun with that, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I'll cut little slices first, and then chop it. This uh, wood that I'm chopping on is bristlecone pine. hundreds of years old and it was recycled from a forest that burned down in the 1800s. Can you believe that? Hmm. Neat stuff. Now you know why I like chopping on it, right? Mm -hmm. You do? Well, it takes you back to your childhood. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> they didn't have trees when you were a kid. That's right. right. <laughs> okay. Um, I think while those are cooking, I'd like to remind you the easiest way to cut up a bell pepper. And if you can hand me a small cutting board. Sure. Um, when you get a bell pepper, you'll get the maximum out of it if it has four sides to it. But regardless of that, the best way to cut it, the easiest way for you is to cut off both ends and then cut along the side and then the seed pod kind of remains intact and you can just discard that and also you can just pop out the stem and this is all ready to be cut up so it's really easy you have the trash over there mm -hmm. you're collecting I'm recycling I see
that's all. And it's just. Want me to take charge of that for a while? Take charge of this, okay. will you, John? Thank you. All right, I'll get back to the black and white bean chili. How's that? I'll add some things. We need a quarter of a cup of flour. And we need to spice it up a little bit. And this time I'm stepping on your cord. That's right. Okay, I'm going to move these out of the way. All right, flour, chili powder, and some cumin. Can you stir that for me, or are you sure. too busy? All right, I need some milk. I'm ready for a little milk. What do you think? Are you going to stir? Sure. Great. We're going to add two cups of milk, and the flour is going to act as our thickener. And the milk is going to act as what? Our liquid. Oh. Okay. I'll just reach over you like this. How's sure. That? I'll stir that up, and then we'll add a few more things to it. Both of these chilies are really easy to make. Let that cook for a little while. Okay. How about if I add some things to this one? Sure. You're in charge of stirring. We're going to add uh, two packs of frozen corn. And two types of beans. So we'll get the black and the white. We're going to add great northern beans and black beans. Looks good enough to eat already. You're just saying that because you're married to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. That looks good. Okay. I, I like being married to you, though. You got out of that one, didn't you? Okay, we're going to add some chick. I can handle this if you're busy. Chicken broth. I'm very busy, but. For you. I'll tell you one thing, we're making a lot of dishes back there today. That's okay. It comes with the territory. Okay, we're going to add a can of green chilies. This will also give it a little bit of bite. The one thing about making chilies is you can make it as hot as you possibly like once you have the base recipe going for yourself. You can make it just till your lips get numb, or you can make it till they fall makes, off. it makes you cry. Right. <laughs> Not till they fall off. I mentioned that this particular recipe has chicken in it, so we're going to put in a total of two cups of cooked cube chicken. And I'm going to have to get back over here, I think. Yep. You're going to take charge. So that was about a cup and a half. You want to just use this to put it in? Sure. Is that my cue? That's your cue. And we poached these yesterday, right? And you want to tell them how you poached them? No. <laughs> okay. 
You can cook your chicken any way you want. You can poach it, you can fry it, you can bake it. Uh, it's best to buy it with uh, the skin and the bone already on and then cook it uh, because it holds in the flavor and it also keeps it from drying out. And then it's simply a matter of uh, pulling off the skin, which comes right off like so. And that exposes the, the breast. There's a thick part up here and a thin part down along the rib cage with a little row of fat along, uh, along the uh, side. And that's kind of where the meat runs out. And uh, so I like to just go along that side, along that row of fat to kind of free that up. Then along this side is, is where the backbone is. There's also in there half of a wishbone because these were split chicken breasts. And if you can find that little bone, put the tip of your knife underneath it and just cut along it. And that'll free it up so that it just pulls out like so. And there's your chicken breast ready to go. Now I like to cut lengthwise first and then turn it and cut my cubes. I'm holding it together with the uh, what I call the claw technique so you can go you know with your fingers curled back you can cut right against uh, with the knife right against your fingers and cut nice cubes like so. And you ready for the rest of these in there? Mm -hmm. There you go. Whoa. And I'll take these to the back here and rinse my hands off. The easiest way that we find that we poach chicken is in a skillet, in a flat um, skillet just in a single layer with a lid on it and a little bit of water. It takes about 15 or 20 minutes. You just start testing it. Um, take it off the heat as soon as they're done. As soon as you cut through and the juices run clear instead of pink, they're done. Or if you have an instant read thermometer, which I've misplaced mine, uh, you oh, can no. go to about 160, 165. Just stick it in the meaty part? and In the thick part. OK, uh -huh. great. All right, we're going to add some things to this. Oh, no. Yeah. So you're in charge over there in case it overflows. You want to go over there? Sure. <laughs> OK, we're going to add uh, red kidney beans and eight ounces of tomato sauce, just plain. It's not overflowing, but it's going to be difficult to stir. I know. That's why I have given you this job. OK. Some uh, chili powder again. Oops, I'm going to wait till you have everything in there. Yeah, please. Some cumin again. Our two favorite ingredients in chili and some cinnamon. And just a little bit of salt. OK. Now. Now mix. You can use a larger frying pan than this, right? <laughs> yeah, but we just wanted to make it difficult. Make it difficult. OK. Um, we mentioned that this is a chili cornbread, so now we need to make the cornbread to go with it. We'll keep an eye on this and stir it once in a while. I can do that while you're cornbreading over there. Okay. And this you just want to turn down to a simmer once you get it mixed. Okay. Great. I'm just about there. OK. Let's mix the dry ingredients first. We just need some flour. I'm simmering. And you're busy concentrating on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're trying to mess me and up. And I'm trying to mess you up, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Cornbread, cornmeal, see? Already. I like to stir things. 
You're so good at it. That's what it is. And some sugar. And we need some baking powder. That's Got probably it. back there. Three teaspoons altogether.